So now that you have a basic understanding about triads and how they're built, I'm going to teach you what close position triads are and how to play and use them. So let's start with the major triad, which again is built with a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. These are the intervals that are in a major triad, but obviously this is showing it on one string and you can't play a chord on one string. You can only play single notes on one string. So to turn this into a chord that you can actually play, you have to move the notes onto different strings. So there's a lot of ways you can play a triad. Anytime you want to play a major triad, for example, all you need is your root and then a major third and a perfect fifth and then play that as a chord in some way. It wouldn't matter what order the intervals are in or if you doubled up, for example, and you had multiple major thirds that you're playing or multiple perfect fifths or multiple roots. And a lot of triads are played that way. Your basic open chords, like a G major open chord, is played that way where, for example, you'd have your root right here and then you'd have a major third right here and then you'd have an open string, which is your perfect fifth, and then you'd have another open string which is another root, or this could be open, which would be another major third, or you could play this note instead, which would be another perfect fifth, and then you'd play this note, which is another root. So that would just be a basic open G major chord, which is a triad, because you'd have a root, a major third, perfect fifth, another root, another perfect fifth, another root. And it wouldn't matter what order these notes are in, these intervals, it doesn't matter how many are doubled up or not, it's still just a major triad. The type of triad we're talking about right now is what's called a close position triad. And a close position triad always goes in the order that it's built. So for example, it would always be a root first and then a major third and then a perfect fifth if you're building a major triad. Or if it was a minor triad, it'd always be a root first, then a minor third, then a perfect fifth in that order. That's a close position triad. And this is what's called root position, meaning that the root is your lowest note. And then I'll talk about what are called inversions later on in this course and explain the order of inversions. But just realize that a close position triad and root position always starts with the root as your lowest note. Your second lowest note is always a third and your third lowest note or your highest note is always a fifth. So to build a major triad, if we start with our root right here, we need to move this major third to this string here because you always go to the closest string. So if you start with your root on the sixth string, your next note is always on the fifth string and then your next note is always on the fourth string. So this major third is going to move to this string and then this perfect fifth is going to move to this string and it would look like this. So that's a close position major triad in what's called root position, meaning that the root is your lowest note. And I'm just showing you intervals. I'm not showing you the actual note names right now because this is gonna stay the same. This shape will stay the same no matter what your note names are. So for example, what I'm showing you right here, this root note is an A note because that's landing on the fifth fret on the sixth string. So this would be an A major triad because the name of the chord is always what the root note name is. But I could move this exact same shape anywhere on the same string sets. And for example, if I move it right here, now I have have a C major triad because this root note is landing on a C. So just realize that the shape is going to stay the exact same when you're on the same string sets and whatever your root note is, that's the name of the chord, that's the name of the triad. Now obviously I've shown this with the root starting on the sixth string, that's the shape if the root's on the sixth string. If I move it down towards the floor, so with the root on the fifth string, it's going to be the exact same shape and hopefully you remember why that is with the way the guitar is tuned. If you've come this far, I'm assuming you understand that by now. And now my root note is on an F note, just the way I've shown it on this diagram. So that would technically be an F major triad, but that shape's gonna stay the same no matter where you play it on those string sets. It's just wherever your root lands, that's the name of the chord. If I move it down towards the floor again with the root on the fourth string, now my triad looks like this, and that's because that perfect fifth, because it's hitting this second string, 
is moving up half a step. And again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you should go back and watch the previous music theory courses where I talk about this in detail. But it's just because of how the guitar is tuned. Once anything hits that second string, you have to move that note up half a step if you want to keep the same chord or the same interval shape, etc. And now because this root note is landing on a B flat, just by the way I've drawn it, that would technically be a B flat major triad. Then if I move the triad shape down towards the floor again to the third string root, your major triad would look like this. And again, it looks different than the last ones because this note is now on the second string, so it had to move up half a step, and so the shape has to change. But all of these shapes that I've just shown you are just the exact same thing. They're just close position major triads in what's called root position, which I'll talk about later. But this is just a close position major triad. This is, this is, this is. And the shape just changes depending on the string sets they land on. But if you're keeping them on the same string set, that shape would stay the same. And again, whatever your root note is, that's the name of the chord. And when I was showing you these, because I just kept all these shapes on the same frets as I was going through the string sets, the first one I showed you with the root on the sixth string was a C major triad because the root is landing on a C note. The second one with the root on the fifth note was an F major tri because the root is landed on an F note. Next one was a B flat major tri because the root landed on a B flat. Next one was an E flat major tri because the root landed on an E flat. But if you want to take a triad and keep it the same chord, you can't keep the triad shape in the same frets, obviously. So for example, here's a C major triad with the root on the sixth string. To play a C major triad with the root on the fifth string, I have to have my root land on a C note. So there's a C right here. There's also one way up here which is pretty high up on the fretboard so you could build it from either of those spots and you could get a C major triad there starting with the root on the fifth string or a C major triad there starting with the root on the fifth string and they're just an octave apart And again, hopefully you understand all that. If you don't, you need to go back and watch some of the earlier music theory courses about how octaves work. And then if I want to have a C major triad with the root starting on the fourth string, again, I need to find the C note that's on the fourth string, which is right here. So there's a C major triad with the root on the fourth string. And then if I want to do it with the root starting on the third string, I have a C right here. There's also one way up here, an octave higher. So that's where my C major triad would be with the root starting on the third string. Or like I said, I could have the exact same thing up here, one octave higher. So if you've come this far, I'm assuming you get that by now, how the guitar fretboard is laid out and why if I keep the shapes within the same frets, they're gonna be different names because they're gonna have different roots. And if I wanna have the same name, the same root, I need to move it up and down the fretboard and it just depends where those root notes land on the fretboard. So now I'm just gonna quickly go through the other triads and show you their shapes. So a minor triad, like I said, was built with a root, a minor third and a perfect fifth. I need to move the minor third and the perfect fifth fifth off of the same string to be able to play a chord and to get a close position triad it would look like this and if I move those through the string sets the next shape would look like this which is the exact same going down to the next string set of course the note that's on the second string has to move up half a step so you get this shape next string set the note that's on the second string needs to move up again you get this shape so those are the close position minor triad shapes <laughs> Your diminished triad, I said, was built with a root, minor third, diminished fifth. We're going to do the same thing, just move them to the adjacent strings to get a close position triad, and then we can just move that through the string sets. And again, every time one of the notes hits the second string, it just needs to move up a fret. <laughs> And then lastly, our augmented triad, I told you was a root, a major third, an augmented fifth, and we'll do the exact same thing 
And as we move them through the string sets, any time a note hits the second string, the shape changes. But those are the shapes of the augmented triad. <laughs> Another thing I want to point out when I was talking about triads just being built by stacking thirds, tertian triads being built by stacking thirds, you can see that with the shapes too. So from your root to your major third is obviously a major third interval shape, which you should recognize. And then from your major third to your perfect fifth, you should recognize is a minor third interval shape. So that's just another way you can visualize it. You've just stacked a major third and a minor third to get the major triad. And then for a minor triad, you switch that up, you stack a minor third and a major third and so on. And lastly, before I end this lesson, I want to revisit one more thing that I talked about earlier in the lesson. And that's just how your basic open chords, a lot of them are just triads. That's all they are. <laughs> The only difference compared to these with the close position triad is that either the intervals aren't in the same order as a close position triad, or you've doubled up intervals or notes. For example, this open G major chord has three roots in it, this open G major chord that I'm sure you've played a million times, and it has one major third and then two perfect fifths. So that's just called doubling up notes, but it's still just a major triad because all the intervals are, are just a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. There's no other type of interval in there. And some of these basic open chords actually end up with close position triads in them. For example, this open G major chord you can see has a close position major triad right in it. But for now, just be aware that your basic open chords, a lot of them are just triads.